What if I told you that there was a player that at one point held three of the top 11 highest PP plays in Osu, had as many 1.4k plus PP plays as a Kali bet, had an improvement speed similar to that of Emrek, was capable of replicating scores set by Eterna, 6 missed a 2000 PP choke, and climbed all the way to number 3 in the Osu rankings within only 5 years of actively playing, all while changing the primary skill set within a year and breaking numerous records in the process. Sounds like this player is a one of a kind prodigy, which is exactly what they were. Cloudful's rise to the top of the Osu rankings was nothing short of incredible, and there was nothing that could stop him. He would be the one to change everything. He was just one of a kind. Everyone knew that if he were to continue the historic pace that he was going at, soon enough we would see his name atop the Osu rankings behind the fastest rise up the ranks in Osu history. But then in 48 hours, everything changed. Yo! Yo! He would be able to hear his voice clearly, but he wouldn't be able to hear his keyboard at all. He just needs to ignore the people for now and make the live play. Butterfall's YouTube channel got deleted and his Twitter was deactivated. Wait, he uses two different rows. He stated that all of his speed scores were cheap. Oh my fing god, dude! You can literally see it happening! Alright, that might have been a bit over the top. Let's start from the beginning. Cloudiful is an OSU player from Qatar who first created his OSU account on March 29, 2017. He initially didn't take a liking to the game, it was mostly inactive starting out. He didn't have a month with a play count of at least 100 until more than two years later in April 2019, but once he started actively playing, the improvement he put on display was nothing short of incredible. After just one year of activity, Cloudiful already set a 500 PP play on the Hadatan version of High Tai, which he set on October 8th, 2020. This was quickly followed by his first 600 PP play on Today's Gonna Be a Great Day on December 5th, and by the end of the year, Cloudiful was firmly in the four digit ranks in just a year and a half of actively playing. It took him a while, at least for his standards, to set his first 700 PP play on June 10th, 2021, on the fiery diff of Guess Who is Back. On this exact same map diff three months later, on September 16th, he would set his first 800 PP play this time by 3 modding it. Unfortunately, his score setting streak would come to a halt as his playing activity would decline in the first half of 2022, as March was the only month he had a play count of at least 1,000 for the first 7 months of the year. And although he returned to actively playing in August, Cloudful failed to set a new top play in 2022, which was disappointing for his pace at the time. It wasn't until February 5th, 2023 when Cloudful would set his next top play, an 875 PP play on Just at Ice. That was the spark he needed to get back to his insane growth once again. 20 days later, his rapid fast improvement showed itself once again when he set his first 900 PP play on Lonely Go. Cloudiful would finally break the 1000 PP milestone by setting his first 1k on 5150 on August 12, 2023. By this point, Cloudiful had established himself as a well-respected player sitting inside the top 100 and on the cusp of breaking into the top 50, as well as having a nice 1000 PP play to his name. He was among one of the game's best players with impressive plays to show for it, but looking at the top ranks left him with more to desire, and for good reason. Those familiar with the Osu community as of late might have noticed that Cloudiful's top plays at the time looked drastically different from his most recent top plays. That is because when Cloudiful first started playing the game, he was primarily an aim player, focusing on DT jump maps as his main way of farming PP and rising the ranks. Most of his plays, including his very first 1000 PP play in August 2023, revolved around his ability to hit a multitude of fast jumps. This was all fine and dandy, but Osu as a whole would shift away from that style of play and favor something completely new. If the meta in Osu in the late 2010s was the era that rewarded snappy and precise aim on fast widescreen jumps, then the 2020s thus far is definitely the era of speed ruled by long streams at blazing fast BPMs that most people wouldn't dare touch not too long ago. With maps like Lionheart and Glory Days fueling Osu's new speed surge, as well as the increasing number of people making use of wooden keyboards and their rapid trigger functionality, players who learned to stream BPMs upwards of 260, 270, and sometimes even more than that became the new focal point within the Osu community. Players like Scytho, Flero, Ninerik, Window Life, and many others who specialize in streaming extremely fast BPMs for extended periods of time flourished in this new meta in 2023. Even players who already found themselves among Osu's elite like Lifeline, who initially specialized in aim, further solidified their top player status after expanding their skill sets and adapting to the new speed meta. Although Osu's new meta started to be more inclusive to players streaming absurdly fast BPMs and moving their two tapping fingers as fast as they can, the game's truly elite players were able to combine their ability to hit fast streams with their ability to hit fast jumps. The top three players right now in Emrek, Akali Bed, and Lifeline are proof of this, as their combination of speedy aim and breakneck streaming ability was truly the best. In fact, their ability to combine both aim and speed was so far above everyone else's that these three alone were ranked as the top three for a very long time. Several months would pass, yet no one could challenge them as they made reaching the podium ranks practically impossible.
unbeatable. But even though the odds were against him, Cloudiful looked to challenge this. If he wanted to gain elite top player status, Cloudiful needed to learn how to tap faster. He already knew this. In fact, he already went out of his way a few months ago in February or March of 2023 to purchase a Wooting to aid his speed journey. Now, with the Wooting in hand, he looked to develop his speed to rival the best speed players in the world. But no one could have possibly expected just how fast his streaming speed would improve. On October 19th, 2023, Cloudiful's speed progression would make itself known as he would set a new top play on Yami no Maho Shoujo. And in true Cloudiful fashion, once he set one score, his improvement would accelerate faster than before. On Halloween of 2023, Cloudiful would set his first 1.1k PP play with a 3 mod FC on Snow Goose. The name of this map should definitely ring a bell to all current Osu players and people familiar with this story, but this isn't the Snow Goose you're all thinking of. For those who don't know what events follow suit, take note of these two words. We'll come back to this later. Anyways, just 18 days after his first 1.1k PB play, Cloudiful would immediately set a new top play by 3 modding the short version of Sidetrack Day. And just like that, we have now witnessed a player who was once exclusively an aim player turn their playing career around and morph themselves into one of the best speed players in record time. Three months ago, his top play and first 1k looked like this. Now his two top plays look like this. EFC 2 maps with 300 BPM and 282 BPM streams with double time respectively for his first two 1.1k PP plays. A transformation like this is unprecedented. Hardly anyone could make such a drastic change in their playstyle like this, let alone at the rate that Cloudiful was going at, yet he was doing this like it was nothing. Thanks to this change in his playstyle, by the end of 2023, Cloudiful found himself inside the top 20, sitting at number 19 on the OSU rankings. But he knew he could take this further, and so he did. If 2023 was the year that Cloudiful would establish himself as a top tier speed player, 2024 was when he would solidify himself as one of the world's best players, period. He would show that his game didn't skip a beat with this play on the fiery diff of Brazil on January 13th, where if he hit this one circle, he would have skipped 1.2k altogether. But regardless, a brand new top play was nothing to get upset about. Besides, even if he were upset with this play, he didn't have to worry about it much longer because just 16 minutes later, he would set another top play on Brazil, this time on the Kuki diff. This was the play that got him to the top 10 for the first time ever, and simultaneously took out Eterna from the top 10 for the first time since July of 2020. This was the first bit of history Cloudiful found himself a part of, but soon he would do more than just that. His speed and aim combo would quickly begin to hit the ground running after he set his new top play on Bed, Bath, and Batman Beyond on February 18th. This was quickly followed by another top play on Juvenile the very next day. As crazy as back-to-back -back top plays on two consecutive days was, it would look nothing in comparison to what he would do in the upcoming months. On March 7th, 2024, Cloudiful would set a 1,432 PP one misplay on Valley of the Veil. This was a 1.3k PP skip, and he did this just 18 days after setting top plays on back-to-back -back days. With this play, Cloudiful entered the top 5 for the first time ever. Now, Cloudiful was being hailed as one of the fastest rising stars in the game and proved that he could reach the top ranks at historic rates. His rise to this point was incredible, but climbing higher would only continue to get more difficult from here on out. In order to contest the TP top ranks, Cloudiful needed to continue his historic pace for an extended period of time. And so, he did. But he didn't just continue the pace that he was going at. No. His already historic pace would actually accelerate. 22 days later on March 29th, Cloudiful would set his second 1.4k PP play on Sidetrack Day. This was not your ordinary 1.4k PP play. This play was actually a 1.8k PP record choke. This was the exact same map that Akalibet holds the current PP record on, and although Cloudiful found 6 misses during his play, he actually beat Akalibet accuracy by more than a full 1%. Just one year ago, Cloudiful was known as just an aim player. Now he was one of, if not the best active speed player in the world. This all seemed too good to be true. I mean, players have added new skill sets to their game in the past, but no one did it as fast and as seamlessly as Cloudiful did with adding speed to his back pocket of already abnormal improvement. Something like this was truly one of a kind within the Osa community. But we didn't have much time to think about this because he would continue to put in work. An accuracy fix on Juvenile on May 4th would give Cloudiful his first 1.3k PP play after setting two 1.4ks, and then came Snow Goose. Remember how I said Cloudiful set his first 1.1k PP play on Snow Goose a few minutes ago? Well, that was set on an older version of Snow Goose, the beatmap step submitted by Velamia on July 22nd, 2022. As it would turn out, Scytho, a top 10 Osu player and arguably the fastest in terms of raw streaming speed, was working on a new map set of Snow Goose. The set under his name would soon get graveyarded, but the beatmap nominator Rihanna would take over this map set, and soon submit this new map set of Snow Goose to be ranked. This map set was submitted all the way back on November 19th of last year, but didn't get ranked until June 12th, 2024. Why was this? Aside from mapping nitpicks among established BNs, the reason was simple. 
it was broken. Just like how Sotark's jumps, or most infamously, Zane took advantage of the PP meta with specific aim patterns, Snogus was the speed equivalent of that. The Scytho difficulty in particular caught the eye of the Ozu community as THE stream farm map for the top speed players. In fact, here is Scytho playing his own map diff for himself for his own top play. This is what the PP values look like for FCs with double time and hidden double time. And with a large amount of PP on the table, the best speed players began to feast. And that included Cloudiful. It didn't take long to cash out on Snow Goose because on June 13th, 2024, just one day after the map got ranked, Cloudiful would FC the Scytho diff of Snow Goose for his new top play. And not just his new top play, but he entered the top three. Getting into the top three in Osu is something very few people can say they have done but entering the top 3 in this current era of Osu is another thing on its own. As mentioned before, no one could catch up to Emrek, Akali Bed, and Lifeline. These three found themselves in the top 3 together since January 11th, 2023, and they would never let anyone else enter Osu's podium ranks for almost a full year and a half straight. But Cloudiful would be the one to finally separate Osu's modern day big 3. For the first time in 519 days, there was a new player in the top 3 of the Osu rankings. How did Cloudiful celebrate this? by setting a 2,000 PP choke six hours later. What the actual fu- So yeah, that is real. That just happened, apparently. Immediately after FCing Snow Goose with hidden double time, Cloudiful would try his hand at three modding it. If someone were to get a three mod FC on the Scytho diff of Snow Goose, they would easily set a new PP record but could also very well set a 2,000 PP play. Cloudiful managed to FC more than two-thirds of the map before finding six misses. He got less 100s with Hard Rock than without, and he forced the Osu community at large to accept that, yes, a 2,000 PP play was actually possible. The legacy was cemented. We had a player with an improvement rate that rivals Emrek, with as many 1.4k PP plays as a Kali bed, that was capable of replicating or outright beating scores set by Eterna, that managed to overtake Lifeline to become the newest top 3 player Ozu had seen in a year and a half who could very well set a 2,000 PP play. Cloudiful had pretty much done everything one could dream of and added new layers of history on top of that. There has never been a top level surge quite like the one Cloudiful went on in 2024. At this rate, and with how long he has sustained it, it seemed like it was only a matter of time before he would find himself sitting at number one. A position that was only held by two players in the past five years. There seemed like there was nothing that could stop him, right? What Cloudiful had done was absolutely unbelievable and a crazy sight to marvel at. But looking at this with a much more analytical standpoint, it's possible to think that this is just a bit too crazy. With any prodigy in any game, there are those people that accuse them of cheating in some kind of way. It's not good when you look up to a person and then suddenly he starts calling you a cheater, man. Osu specifically doesn't really have a good anti-cheat system, and there have been numerous instances of players reaching the high ranks with their cheats going undetected. For instance, during the aptly named 2016 cheating fiasco, the player Karate made it to number 7 before admitting to using Time Warp and promptly getting banned. Also in the 2016 cheating fiasco, the player Glitter Goose made it to number 13 before submitting a cheated play on purpose to get banned since it was clear that Osu staff wasn't going to do anything otherwise. In the case of Fia and Fushimi Ryo, they were a multi-account cheating scheme that tampered with the 2022 Osu World Cup with illegitimate play, the largest and most prestigious tournament of the year. It took a 44-page document of hard evidence to prove their case of multi-accounting in order to get them banned. On the opposite side, out of this problem, some legitimate players like Vaxe, White Cat, and Emrek were relentlessly berated with cheating allegations. And in the cases of Phil's Dilemma and Azerite, they were handed false restrictions despite being innocent. The absence of an anti-cheat has pretty much made both active suspicion of top players normal, and so it was only natural that some people were at least kind of skeptical of what Cloudiful was doing. Thankfully, these thoughts would more than likely be dismissed as just mere speculation because there was no real evidence to base those claims. And besides, even if people did raise questions, those would be put to rest because players have a multitude of ways to prove their innocence. Most top players accused of cheating have available VODs of their plays with hand cams, and some have even recorded their own live plays. In the most severe cases, some made proof videos to truly debunk any accusations. But as of right now, Cloudiful could simply just pull up a hand cam VOD or live play to steer clear. However, there was one problem. Where was the live play? There are stream clips that exist of Cloudiful using a hand cam, but those were from live streams before he evolved his playstyle to become a top tier speed player. Since this transition, although his streams did involve the use of a microphone, there was no hand cam or any live play to be found. It doesn't help that whenever someone questioned his legitimacy or the absence of a live play, Cloudiful's counter response would always be something along the lines of I'm cheating, perhaps as a way to jokingly stop people from looking too far into this. But in the end, no one thought much of anything, really. Everyone was under the pre-notation 
saying that if he was actually cheating, he would have been caught a very long time ago. While it was still weird that there was no recent life play that exists, it was widely accepted that Cloudfall was legit without much thought being put into that assumption. However, following his crazy 2000 PP choke on Snow Goose, where he would once again pull out his I'm cheating meme, I'm cheating! I'm literally cheating! I'm literally f***ing cheating. Speculation would unexpectedly reach a deeper level. On June 15th, 2024, the user ChildFangirl would make this post on r slash Oster report suspecting Cloudiful of using relaxed cheats. They noticed something particularly strange about Cloudiful's play. Specifically, they had gripes with Cloudiful's average circle hold time, which is the amount of time a key's input is held when tapping before being released. To prove their case, they made graphs of hold times of known legit players and Cloudiful's. Looking at the graphs of the legit players, we can see that their hold times follow a normal distribution graph. If we were to draw a line of the data points of the graph, we can see that it follows a natural bell curve, favoring a specific interval of hold times at the points of higher frequency, but with a degree of deviation denoted by the points of low and medium frequency. Now looking at Cloudiful's graph, his hold times also follow a normal distribution, except the bell curve of his graph is much more narrow, instead spiking at the 63 millisecond mark with little to no deviation at all. This immediately put Cloudiful's play into question because a low hold time deviation like this is very unnatural, and the absence of a recent I play up to this point made this all the more suspicious. With the increasing amount of accusations, Cloudiful, with the mounting pressure, would prepare himself to post a live play the very next day. But when tomorrow rolled around, he bailed out. Bro, if you're genuinely risking your account getting banned, that would be priority number one for anyone. Most were shocked by the developments taking place, but those that looked at the situation with curiosity wanted to get a closer look. To many, the main problem with the graphs in the Reddit post is that there was no real way to confirm if the data was trustworthy. This was because the graph originates from a website that sells osu cheats which made the collected data suspicious because of that more people tried approaching the situation on their own notably minis bet a filial community member wrote her own tool providing transparent and more in-depth insights into what was going on with the whole times mini is a software engineer who has made a lot of contributions to the osu community in times past and who was kind enough to lend me insights for this part of the video because of the nature of how the original data was obtained she knew that if she produced a tool within the osu community that is both accurate and locally verifiable they would have a conclusion of answer to the trustworthiness of the allegations. And after only 30 minutes of work, on June 16th, 2024, Mini was able to produce a whole time analyzer tool that is not only more accurate, but also analyzes the player's two tapping keys separately to provide more concise data. And the results would completely take the OSA community by storm. The graphs Mini provided gave more important insights to the investigation of Cloudiful's play. First and foremost, there was the confirmation of the merit of Child Fangirl's accusations. Additionally, they provided more accurate data as the graphs Child Fangirl provided would run in depth of 3 milliseconds while those from Mini would narrow it down to the single millisecond. But most notably, since her graph separated the two input keys of Osu, we were able to see something interesting. The spikiness of the graph around the 63 millisecond mark would only happen on one of the two keys. Specifically, this would happen on Cloudiful's key 2, the key he presses with his non-dominant tapping finger. Here you can see a similar bell curve with the high spike and low deviation like the one illustrated on the child fan girl's graphs. But perhaps the most perplexing findings come from Cloudiful's key 1, the key of his dominant tapping finger. If we were to draw the bell curve around these data points, you'll notice that the bell curve on this key is more in line with the bell curves of the legit player graph shown earlier. The data from Mini's graph show that Cloudiful's inputs were being modified in some way, either purposely or unintentionally as initially suspected, but only for his secondary tapping key. His primary tapping key, however, was shown to be normal and in line with natural play. What exactly was going on here? In this Reddit post from the Osu Report Mafia, they clarified that the distribution of hold times could easily be replicated by using Wooting's dynamic keystroke settings, or DKS for short, and that if Cloudiful were to use DKS, it would be a ban-worthy cheating offense since it functions as a macro. However, they also note that it would be impossible for Cloudiful to hit sliders if he were to use DKS. This is because if someone using DKS were to fully depress the key, DKS would input a release and causes a slider break since sliders require a constant held input along its trail with its slider ball. This has been confirmed by others who tried using DKS for themselves. So, most people suspected that DKS didn't have much of a role in this, and that meant no one knew exactly what this was. But even though no one knew what was going on, the OC Report Mafia determined with 95% certainty that Cloudiful was cheating, either intentionally or unintentionally through normal software or hardware such as Wooting, or deliberately using some kind of cheating software. Just because the method of illegitimate play was unknown, doesn't mean there was no foul play going on. These past 24 hours have completely changed the way everyone looked at Cloudiful Play. It made us question not only if he was cheating, but if there was a new method of cheating being used. There was simply no cheating situation quite like this.
It's June 17th, 2024. Cloudiful would finally upload his long-awaited live play to YouTube. And this might be the strangest live play a top player has ever produced. First, there was the immediate problem of Cloudiful entering his password on camera for 30 seconds. But as far as the live play itself is concerned, it had a lot of red flags. 1. Cloudiful shows us the utility settings that he would use during this live play, but it's clear that there are other profiles present. With the keyboard shortcut function and enter, you can quickly access your other utility profiles, which Cloudiful is seen inputting before the start of his live play on Snow Goose. This indicates that he tried to hide the fact he was switching utility profiles without manually pulling up the utility software. 2. Cloudiful taps on two diagonal keys with his fingers, which is atypical for most other players. Additionally, the angle of the camera conceals how he was tapping with his ring finger, which as we know from Mini's graphs is the key with the abnormal hold time distribution. This concealment, whether intentional or not, makes it more ambiguous to examine how exactly he arrives at the suspicious hold time consistency. 3. Viewers of the live play have noticed that his tapping doesn't always match what is shown on the key display. If his real life tapping matched with what registered in game, there would be no problems, but this provided real time proof that there was was something wrong with the live play. And 4. Cloudiful would not only take down the live play and all other videos from his YouTube channel, but also delete his Twitter account and every other social media account he had. This left any opportunity of a written defense off the table, as there was no way for him to publicly address the accusations. Within the span of 48 hours, any merit that Cloudiful had built up to this point was completely gone. The Osu community went from hailing one of the best plays the game had ever seen from one of the best prodigies in the game's history, to scrutinizing the legitimacy of his accomplishments. The thing is, because Cloudiful entered his password live on camera, Everyone was scared for not just his legitimacy, but his well-being and safety too. Many people thought his accounts went down because of his self-imposed password leak that people took advantage of. And all of a sudden, this situation nosedived into total chaos. He might have, if he uses the same password for his Oso account, which he typed in on his live play, and he uses the same password for everything else? No way! No way! It needs to be stressed that there was not a cheating situation like this. As previously mentioned, Karai reached number 7 on the OC rankings before being banned in 2016 after admitting to using cheats. Up to this point, he was the highest ranked cheater to be banned while initially trying to hide their cheats. But even if Cloudiful was cheating, no one knew how he was doing this. But cheating talk aside, Cloudiful also might have put himself in serious danger. If the password leak was true, he was at serious risk of a massive security breach. Everyone was now simultaneously trying to prove if he was cheating or not while also praying for his safety. The situation reached its peak as Claudeville had seemingly run from the public spotlight, but there would be someone that would relay his last words to the community on his behalf, bringing the end to everyone's speculation. On that same day, the top UK OSU player Plasma would put out this tweet, saying that Cloudiful has admitted to using a dynamic keystroke to gain an unfair advantage when tapping and provided an explanation for how it works. With DKS, someone can set up to four different actions at four different points of a keystroke. First, during its initial actuation, next when the key is fully depressed or bottoms out, then when the key starts going back up during the initial release, and lastly when the key retracts back to its highest actuation point. Cloudiful set up his key 2 to only activate on its release. This allows his key 2 to register an input upon release and immediately end that input afterwards since the key was bound to nothing else. As mentioned before, this would not work for hitting slider since it automatically inputs a release, which is why key 1 is left unchanged. This would get around the slider problem since key 1 could be held as normal. And this exact setup lines up with Midi's graph showing the unnatural hold time deviation of Cloudiful's key 2 and the normal deviation of his key 1. Pressing these two keys in conjunction leads to an input scheme where key 1 would register a key press during both keys initial actuation and upon the release of both keys, key 1 would deactivate activate and key 2 would register an input and release, effectively providing a rhythmic input that makes streams easier. This would explain why Cloudiful's hand cam did not match with the key overlay. He is straight up double tapping! It's not some f***ing technique sh Oh my god! And when analyzing one of Cloudiful's replays, an extraneous input is made when tapping streams with an odd number of notes since this technique results in an even number of inputs since both keys are being pressed. Cloudiful had now confessed that all of his speed scores were cheated, and there is evidence to show that he did this as far back as April 2023, backed up by whole time graphs from those times. And just like that, everything crashed down within 48 hours. This news left everyone feeling a wide variety of emotions. But at the end of the day, everyone shared one feeling disappointment. The accomplishments, the scores, the records, all of that was now tainted. If most of everything that led us to this point was never real to begin with, what was the point of getting invested in it? Those thoughts and many more along those lines rushed into everyone's minds as they waited for the official end of this saga to come. And that would arrive on the very next day, as on June 18th, 2024, Cloudiful's Osu account would be restricted, making his rise to number 3 the highest rank anyone achieved before being banned while trying to hide their cheats.
It's crazy to think just how little remains after all of this was uncovered. What was once the story of one of the best prodigies Oso had ever seen, and someone who could finally bring an end to the standstill atop the Oso rankings, is now devoid of anything that made it so special in the first place. All we have left is one number that people might jokingly use with a negative connotation that also serves as a reminder of what once was, and our collective thought of what could have been. Moral of the story? Don't cheat.